we enter in our parsha into the final act of the story of B'nai Israel's redemption. And as a climax of the story of the Makot approaches, HaKadosh Baruch Hu explains the point of the whole play. Leman shiti ototai ele bikirbo, uleman tisaper beoznei vincha uven bincha, et asher hitalauti bimitzraim, vet ototai asher samti bam vidatem ki ani Hashem. The purpose here of the repeated makot and of the hardening of Paro's heart, now made possible only by God himself, is to show my signs before him. It is, in a word, to inspire. It is expressly designed to instill within the entire Jewish people who see and experience it with their own eyes, the power and, and omnipotence of Hashem. It is quite simply so that you may know that I am the Lord. The goal here is plain both from the text itself and in the comments by our Parshanim. As Ramban puts it, this is being done. Orachayim takes it even further, writing that the purpose here is lechazek haotot shehem ikar haemuna belev Yisrael kedei sheye rashum bali shachach lanetzach. This display, in other words, is nothing short of the foundational learning experience in which the Jewish people are taught to believe in Hashem and in His greatness. Yet there's a, a complication to this educational approach as well. Aviva Gottlieb Zornberg suggests in her Exodus on Reflections that signs are a rather flamboyant concession, theatrical demonstration of power to resort to marvels and transformations, she writes, is a descent into a more superficial mode of communication. Zornberg points to the repeated instances when the Torah describes things being done before or seen by the eyes of the people, as in Perak Dalet. Vayas ha'otot the enei ha'am, vaya'amet ha'am vayishmeu. Moshe did the signs before the eyes of the people, and the people believed and listened. Similarly, perhaps especially, the very last words of the Torah provide a final tribute describing Moshe as the one uniquely capable of performing signs and wonders, Le'ene kol Yisrael. Zornberg cautions, however, that this phrase introduces, quote, the nuance of the illusory, the too immaculate facade. She points to Rashi and Breshi, Membet Chavtalit, who writes that when Yosef imprisoned Shimon Le'enehem, before the brothers' eyes, it was simply a show to intimidate the brothers. Once they left, he released Shimon and gave him food and drink. Signs and wonders, then, are certainly a potent demonstration of Hashem's power. They instill fear and inspire faith. But they also conceal some of the deeper complexities of an authentic experience. They bring to mind Lahavdil, the great and powerful Oz, right? The, the, the perhaps Queen Gertrude's observation that the lady doth protest too much. And therein lies the educational challenge, for me at least. There's no question that power inspires and that at, as educators, our primary job is to inspire, to nurture, to facilitate faith. There's no doubt that the greatest teacher who ever was, Moshe Rabbeinu himself, relied on this pedagogical approach in his own leadership of Ben Israel. At the same time, though, what's lost with this stance? Moshe himself, of course, harbored great doubts, asked difficult questions, grappled with tremendous uncertainty. And yet, as we know from the end of Parsha Kitisa, he literally and physically had to mask much of his own personal encounter with Hashem from Ben Israel. I was blessed to experience from Moreno Virobeno Rav Lichtenstein an approach that for me directly acknowledged this educational dilemma. He emphasized the beauty of learning that nothing is lacquered. He refused to resort to simplicity and he stood for so many of us as a model of nuance, of integrity and authenticity in Avodat Hashem. And of course, he balanced this with the majesty of his presence and the power of his Torah.
like so many others, I was deeply and profoundly inspired by his ability to avoid the performative, to pull back the curtain, to reveal authenticity, while also projecting the wonder of the encounter with the Kaddish Baruch Hu. It, I can attest that this is no easy educational task. And I often wonder, as I'm sure Moshe did as well, how best to balance the signs and wonders with the nuance and complexity for those whom we are entrusted to teach and inspire. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you.